Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So uh, we will continue our discussion with uh, computer networking and data communication. And uh, so far in the previous videos we discussed about uh, the TCP IP model, the transmission control protocol and internet working protocol model and we also discussed uh, briefly about physical layer and I told that in the upcoming videos uh, I will discuss about you know the the concepts various things associated with physical layer and we also uh, uh, underline various points various topics which we will cover starting from signals uh, the various characteristic features of signals then uh, various uh, forms of data which is used for data communication then uh, transmission medium so we will uh, do that so this is the first video uh, related to physical layer and uh, is one of the most important simple basic but important which is signals now i have already uh, discussed about signals in the signals and systems section uh, you can check out that video as well but still in order to move in a systematic manner i am discussing this uh, signal concept the basic concepts related to signal again in this computer networking and data communication section so that we move in a systematic way okay so the first thing what is a signal we all know that uh, a signal is basically a function okay which represents the behavior of any physical parameter any physical phenomena or any physical quantity okay it can be anything so it contains information the necessary information about the behavior of that physical process okay uh, that phenomena so anything can be represented in the form of a signal for example right now i am speaking you know my voice it is also a signal it is called as let's say a speech signal so this is the general waveform of a speech signal so you can see it is very uh, you know it is a compressed form if we expand it in the time domain uh, we can see the detailed you know the view of all the spikes in the waveforms so this is a general speech signal now in the biomedical instrumentation section uh, in that playlist we have discussed various uh, you know biological signals okay physiological signals such as ecg electrocardiogram signal eeg electroencephalogram electromyogram which give information about the functioning of heart brain and the skeletal muscles so they are also signals so here let us consider a ECG signal, electrocardiogram signal. This is a typical pattern, the waveform of a ECG signal. We have discussed about it in detail in the biomedical instrumentation section, but just to give you an example of what is a signal and what are, there can be different types of signal of different, you know, um, origin, okay? So this is a ECG signal and the p q r s t are the characteristic points positions which are used to study the behavior of the ecg signal let us say take another example let's say earthquake when an earthquake happens the vibrations the oscillations that are produced they can also be represented in the form of a signal so uh, an earthquake waveform it looks something like this okay the vibrations of the produced due to earthquake so these are just the various examples of how signals play a role in our day-to-day -day lives so basically the signal can be a function of one or more independent variables okay it can be there many variables can play a role can influence to cause any change in the signal but basically in the signals and systems and for in computer networking data communication too we will basically deal with time domain signals okay signals as a function of time but in various other 
cases there can be other uh, parameters associated with it such as space or any physical variables such as temperature pressure whatever it can be of any variable can come into play but basically for signals and systems for communication purpose for signal processing and analysis purpose we basically deal with time domain signals signals as a function of time so we will keep our discussion confined to that but to make for your understanding signals can be a function of many variables it can be anything physical chemical whatever uh, so classification of signals also we have covered in signals and systems but just to uh, discuss it again so signals can be classified into various categories first continuous and discrete time signal continuous signal the signal variations exist for each and every point of time discrete it is it happens at distinct certain distinct points specific points then analog and digital signals again analog signal is continuous in nature same as continuous time but uh, the digital signals they are actually obtained from these discrete time signals through the process of sampling quantization and encoding these are the three uh, steps that are performed on the analog signal, the continuous signal to get us a digital signal. We will discuss about them in detail in the signals and systems section, also in the communication systems. Right now we just understand this. Then we have periodic and non-periodic signals. Periodic signals and non-periodic periodic signals have a fixed pattern, fixed waveform which repeats itself after fixed intervals of time. Non-periodic signals do not exhibit any such fixed pattern or shape. Then we have even and odd signals which are symmetrical around the origin and the, uh, the vertical axis, y axis, then deterministic and random signal. Deterministic signal means the value the amplitude of an, any signal at any given point of time it's absolute it can be determined but random it's in a, of a probabilistic nature then energy and power signals so we have already covered it in signals and systems but here from the point of view of computer networking and data communication we have to you know uh, focus our attention mainly on these two signals analog and digital and periodic and non-periodic because these things will appear a lot of time in the upcoming videos analog periodic signal digital non-periodic signal then uh, various other things so we should understand this in a good way also the continuous and discrete time signal because digital signals are obtained from discrete time signals so first is analog signals so analog signals are those which are continuous in nature that is the signal values we can obtain their values or they exist at each and every point of time okay and there is no restriction on what values the signal can take it can take any value in between zero and infinity okay no restriction on the values of the signal for example let us consider this waveform okay so it is continuous in nature because there is no breaks in between no gaps it exists starting from t equals to zero up to any interval time t and there are no fixed values see it's slowly increases at time uh, as time t increases up to this point from this point it gradually decreases then there is a constant value then slightly increase then again constant so no restriction on the amplitude of the signal and no gaps it means it exists at each and every point of time okay no gaps then digital signals digital signals are defined at specific instants of time okay and they are obtained from discrete time signals so a discrete time signal looks something like this okay now this discrete time signal is uh, obtained by a process called sampling okay sampling means 
a number of samples of the analog signal as are taken at fixed duration at fixed intervals of time following the sampling theorem where the sampling frequency is greater than or equal to twice of the maximum signal frequency that is the sampling theorem then we get this discrete time signal then quantization and encoding after performing and quantization and encoding okay for an analog to digital conversion we get finally this digital signal in the form of these pulses okay so this is the basic concept of analog to digital conversion so in digital signals the signal can have certain fixed predefined values that are defined by certain voltage levels for example the general convention which is used is uh, zero volt is taken as low and 5 volt is taken as high also the reverse is also done sometimes uh, 5 volt is taken as low 0 volt is taken as high so there are various logic system positive and negative logic which we have discussed in digital electronics but there are certain fixed values that the digital signal can take so now let us understand the difference between analog and digital through a simple example now we all have analog clocks at uh, we all have or had analog clocks in our houses uh, and we have seen them and uh, this is a very good example of what an analog system is so we have the uh, the second clock which continuously moves around in clockwise direction then we have the hour and the minute clock the the uh, hand hour and minute hands so let us consider this movement of this clock from 10 o'clock to 10 5 if we see it in a digital system the minute this it changes continuously from 0 0 to 0 1 to 0 2 to 0 3 to 0 4 to 0 5 okay but let us consider any point in between 10 o'clock and 10 1 okay this any point in between this see this is the duration from 10 o'clock to 10 5 and it is divided by five equidistant points 1 2 3 4 5 up to this 1 2 3 4 5 suppose the minute hand of the clock is here 10 to 10 1 so this duration from 12 to this point black point here this duration the movement of the clock between this duration is missing in the digital clock in between 10 to 10 1 that is absent in the digital clock we don't know what what is happening in between that but that we can see in the analog clock as the clock moves from this point to this point 10 to 10 1 10 to 10 1 similarly from 10 1 to 10 2 when it moves it moves through this gap 10 2 to 10 3 it moves through this gap 10 3 to 10 4 it moves through this gap 10 4 to 10 5 it moves through this gap but that is absent in digital clock in digital clock you directly get 0 0 to 0 1 but what happens in between 0 0 to 0 1 that is not you know we don't get that information in digital clock similarly here when we convert this analog signal into digital form through this discrete time and again we get this these gaps in between these points okay we have taken samples at these points but what about the amplitude values in between these points that is missing that information is missing so basically digital signal is an approximate value of the analog signal it is not the exact it is approximate so when we take samples of this analog signal and we get this discrete time signal the these gaps that are created in between these gaps the information is missing okay okay these amplitude values are missing in this discrete time signal we have only taken samples at these equidistant points and the information in between these points are missing okay so that is a drawback of discrete uh, digital signals but still digital signals are used it is very much used these days because of its various advantages that it has over analog signals 
so that is for a separate discussion okay then uh, we is uh, we have to discuss periodic and non periodic signals so periodic signals are those which repeat themselves after a fixed interval of time a definite interval of time which is called as the time period okay it is called as the time period of the signal okay and uh, as i said they have a fixed shape or pattern which repeats itself after regular intervals of time and popular examples of periodic signal is the sine and cosine signal okay this so this is the fixed pattern of this sine signals this pattern it again repeats itself after this fixed interval of time t again starting from here again it repeats itself this is a periodic signal this is sine signal sinusoidal then non periodic signals they it is just the opposite of periodic signals it do not have any fixed pattern or fixed shape repeating itself they are irregular in their shape example is noise and distortion signals this is a non periodic signal see this is a non periodic signal earthquake waveform a voice the speech signal it is non periodic there is no fixed shape okay so these are not most of the signals that we come across in our day to day lives are non periodic in nature they do not have any fixed pattern or shape so this is a basic example of a non periodic signal no pattern no shape anything like that so here uh, we discussed about some basic concepts related to signals from the point of view of computer networking and data communication okay so in the next videos we will discuss about the signal concepts uh, some more videos will uh, discuss so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering have a great day thank you very much